Okay, welcome to chapter 28. Chapter 28 is on the nervous systems. Uh, I kind of have a different setup. I'm in a different room and I've got my laptop balanced on my lap and holding the microphone. And so we'll see how it goes. My nervous system is definitely going to be uh, getting a workout as we go through this. This is a gorgeous picture here of a, it looks like a computer simulation of a neuron from National Geographic. And then this is kind of a picture of uh, a brain. It looks like a, this is trying to model what's called a functional MRI. So we're taking a picture of what parts of the brain are actually active at a certain point in time. Uh, if we could summarize what chapter 28 is about, it's really about just three things. First thing it's about is about um, neurons and, and how what neurons are built and then how the whole nervous system is kind of put together. Second thing is on an action potential. You really have to understand how a nerve fires and how that, uh, that signal is sent down the neuron. And then the last little thing uh, it's about is about the human brain and, and how the human brain is kind of organized. So if we start here with the nervous system, nervous system has two parts to it. It's got the central nervous system, and then it has the peripheral nervous system. Central nervous system is going to be the brain and the spinal cord. And then the peripheral nervous system is going to be getting sensory input, like my eyes now are getting sensory input from envi my environment. And then I'm able to think about it, and then I'm able to use motor output to do things like move my hands. If we look at how the neurons are actually put together, and this is one we looked at in class, um, if you hit yourself right here in the front of this tendon on the front of your knee, your body thinks that you're falling forward, and so a quick reflex is to kick out your leg. How does that work? You have a sensory neuron that's found within that uh, We're going to send a message that's eventually going to go into the spinal cord, and in, if, since this is a reflex, it's not going to go all the way to the brain, but it's going to have what's called an interneuron here in between neurons, and then it's going to send a message right out back to those muscles and tells the, the foot to kick. Um, the functional unit of the nervous system is called the neuron. In other words, one nerve cell is going to be called a neuron. It's got some parts that you really want to become familiar with. Uh, on this side, we have the dendrites. Dendrites are kind of like branches of a tree. They're going to pick up information, and a lot of time they're connected to other neurons. This is the cell body, and so that's going to contain like the nucleus and all the other organelles that a cell needs to uh, work. Most of the length of a neuron is actually in the axon, and you have some axons that'll go, for example, all the way down your leg, and so they can be pretty long. Uh, we have a number of support cells, and so one of the big ones as far as axon goes is that we've got a uh, myelin sheath. In other words, these are fat cells that wrap about, uh, and what that does is uh, increases the speed like a hundredfold of that signal as it goes down the uh, neuron. Now, I said the action potential is really important, and it is. Action potential is how that information is sent down the neuron. And if you think it works like electricity, it doesn't really work that way. It's more like, uh, think of it like chemical dominoes that are falling over. It's the best way to think about it. You hear me say this a lot in class, but a good way to think about a neuron is that it's like a salty banana. What does that mean? If you're a salty banana, uh, then you've got a lot of potassium, and you can see that on the inside. That's the K plus, and then you have a lot of sodium on the outside. And so the sodium I like to remember is like sodium found in sodium chloride. And so a neuron is set up with a membrane potential. In other words, there is a negative uh, microvoltage on the inside compared to the outside. What does that mean? It has the potential to do work. In other words, we could actually measure uh, volts across that if we had a little uh, voltmeter that we could stick in there. Um, how did we build that? It all comes from what's called the sodium-potassium pump. So sodium-potassium pump, and remember, it's active transport. So we're putting ATP in to do this. It's pumping sodium to the outside, and it's pumping potassium to the inside. But we're pumping more sodium out than we're pumping potassium in. We also have proteins on the inside, which have a negative charge, so that gives us that overall charge. Now, what happens in an action potential if we break it down is something happens on one side of the neuron. In other words, I could push on my head, and that's going to be changing those uh, sensory neurons at this point in my head, and, and it makes a cascade, and that cascade is going to be an action potential. What does it look like? Well, this is what it looks like if we compare it to its, its uh, membrane potential or its millivolts on this side. So a re regular neuron is going to sit right here at negative 70 millivolts, and so we also have a potential, or excuse me, a threshold of around negative 50. So what happens first? Well, there are gated pathways, and those allow sodium to come in, and then there are other ones that allow potassium to go out. And so something happens where we open up those sodium gates, and sodium starts to flow in. What does that do to, the, to that potential across it? 
it's actually going to move it more positive because we're moving more of those positive charges to the inside. And as sodium starts to move in, that opens up more of these gated channels and more sodium starts to pour in until we eventually hit what's called the threshold. If we hit that point, then all heck's going to break loose. If we don't, then it just returns back to that membrane potential. So if we do hit that threshold, then we're going to see this big swing as all the sodium opens up. And then eventually we reach a point where those sodium gates are going to close and we're going to open up the potassium gates. Potassium is then going to start flowing out of the cell and then we're going to swing back to the negative and then we're going to undershoot on this side. And the important part of that, of undershooting, is that that keeps our, our uh, uh, action potential moving in one direction. In other words, it can't kind of go back on itself. And so the difference between me hitting myself like this and me hitting myself like that is the number of action potentials. And so a little signal is going to be a few action potentials uh, per millisecond. But if I get a big hat, like a hit like that, it's going to be a bunch of action potentials really, really quickly. And so not only are we able to sense, um, pick up signals, but we're also able to, to measure how big those signals are. Now one interesting point about neurons is that they're not connected, hardwired to each other. There are some electrical synapses in some organisms, but in us we have this gap, which is right between the middle. And so we have neurotransmitters. Those are going to be chemicals. And so as that action potential arrives at the synapse, calcium is going to start flowing into this. This would be the presynaptic side. And that's going to trigger the release of these neurotransmitters. What do they do? They just diffuse across that gap, and they'll interact with a channel on the other side. And that's going to open up that ion channel. What starts to flow in, sodium is going to start flowing in. And so that starts another action potential on the other side. Now, all neurons are getting a bunch of signals. They're saying, it's time for you to fire, or it's time for you not to fire. And so it's the summation of all of those that, that tell a, uh, a neuron if it should fire or not. Now, nervous systems have gotten more complex over time. They started with a pretty simple kind of a, um, let me spin forward a little bit. They started with a simple kind of a nerve net. And then through time, they've gotten more complex. And so as species have become um, bilaterally symmetrical, in other words, they put the eyes at the front, then the nerves have also kind of cephalized. In other words, they've moved up to a brain in the front. Sorry about all that spinning. And so we eventually have something like us where we've got uh, all of those neurons which are centered in a brain, and then a brain is able to make decisions and, and send messages out. Another important point here that I failed to mention is that you've got a cerebral spinal fluid that's going to surround that whole brain. And, and so what we have is a blood-brain barrier between our blood and then... Um, and our brain. And so what that does is allow nutrients and oxygen to get in, but it doesn't allow toxins and things like that. As far as the human brain goes, there's some really important parts. We can start here at the bottom. We kind of call this the hindbrain, or this is going to be right here at the bottom. This is going to be the brain stem. Brain stem, especially as we move up to the medulla and the, and the pons are in charge of breathing, so those really core body functions. We then move up into the midbrain, and this is where information is kind of going to be routed. So you can think of that like a fat pipe and information is just coming right through it. Another couple important parts that we have up here is the, uh, this is the hypothalamus. Remember that's really important in the endocrine system. And there's that pituitary sitting right underneath that. We then have the thalamus on top of that and that's part of this forebrain. And the thalamus is taking information in and it's routing it to the right part of the brain. And so in other words, we process different things in different parts of our brain. And then eventually we get up to what's called the cerebral cortex. Ah, I just got a little bit of time left. Cerebral cortex is when are, where you're going to hold things like um, uh, memories. That's where we're going to do a lot of the processing that I'm doing right now. One thing I forgot was the cerebellum. Cerebellum is kind of in charge of uh, coordination. So those are kind of parts of the brain. And uh, the human brain is probably, we could argue, one of the most sophisticated things that's ever evolved. Um, probably in, in the known universe. And we're just starting to figure it out.